Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is about heat wave hype and superstition. The goal of climate alarmists is to create primal fear. Fear of drowning and fear of burning up are two of their most commonly used tools. So when we get a few days of hot weather like we had in Europe earlier this week, the alarmists come out in force. Paris breaks all-time high temperatures, deadly heat wave shatters records across Europe. UK is hottest day ever as Europe broils in record heat. Europe's record-breaking heat wave in photos. Wow, you can see heat in pictures now? So let's look at the actual temperatures in Paris this year and compare them to another very hot year, which was the summer of 1947. The blue line is temperatures taken at the Paris Le Bourget Airport from June 1st through the end of August in 1947. The red line is temperatures taken at the same location so far this summer. It's fascinating how similar the temperatures are. We see a spike here, spike here, spike here, spike here, spike here in both years. At this point, though, they've diverged. Paris has become quite cool, whereas in 1947 the heat wave persisted for weeks. But on June 25th, Paris did indeed break their all-time heat record by one degree over 1947. But it should be obvious to everyone that there's nothing statistically or scientifically significant about the fact that it got a little bit hotter on one day. The other two heat waves were hotter in 1947, and the rest of July was much hotter in 1947. What happened on July 25th is that there was a very strong storm off to the west, and there was high pressure off to the east. And this funneled hot air from Africa up through Paris and London. The heat was very short-lived. Now the storm has moved over England and France and it's become quite cool there. But this is important. Look at the direction of the wind from the south to the north. Now let's look at the location of the airport. The airport is located right in central Paris, right in the middle of a huge urban heat island. And as the winds move from south to north across this urban heat island, they undoubtedly heat it up. Thus, this year was a little bit warmer than the peak in 1947, but it has nothing to do with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide levels were very low in 1947, yet temperatures were very similar. Unfortunately, temperatures from the airport are missing for the very hot year of 2003, but other locations in France have them. This graph shows temperatures from Gordon in southwest France. The blue line is 2003 and the red line is 2019. There was a tremendous 10-day heat wave in 2003, which is not going to occur this year. Forecast temperatures are much cooler this year. So as you can see, 2003 was much hotter across the summer than this year, which is supposedly record heat. This year wasn't even close to 2003. But facts don't matter to the press. They have an agenda to produce propaganda. Now let's look at another hot year in Europe from a time when CO2 levels were very low, 1911. This graph shows the peak temperatures in France and Germany for every day from July 6th through September 14th, 1911. As you can see, they had a tremendous heat wave which lasted for more than two months. Most days were over 90 degrees or 32 C during that period. Compare that to this year where there were just a few days of hot weather. The two month long 1911 heat wave killed more than 40,000 people in Paris. And it was also extremely hot in London. It was 95 degrees in the shade today in London. Last month was the most rainless July for 50 years. Owing to the heat wave in Paris, the deaths during the last fortnight have totaled 588 above the normal number at this time of year. This is dated August 11, 1911. Here's another article from August 1911. Terrible heat wave. Over 1,000 deaths in Germany. Great heat in England. Large numbers of deaths in Paris. And at the bottom it says, heat and drought in America. So it was hot in America too. And in fact, the two hottest days on record in the northeastern U.S. both occurred during the summer of 1911. This graph shows the 25 hottest days on record in the northeastern U.S. And as you can see, almost all of them occurred a long time ago, with carbon dioxide levels below 350 parts per million. The last really hot days they had in the northeastern U.S. occurred eight years ago in 2011. 
July 4th, 1911 was the hottest July 4th on record in the United States with 100 degree temperatures shown by these purple dots from California up into New England. Here's an article from Baltimore, July 5th, 1911. Fierce heat persists. Toll of death grows. Many fatalities reported in other cities of the country. New England scorches under temperatures of 100 to 104 degrees. But the interesting thing about 1911 is that it wasn't just hot in the summer. May was also extremely hot that year. The blue line shows peak temperatures in the Northeast every day from May 11th, 1911 to May 30th, 1911. And as you can see, it was over 90 degrees every single day but one during that period. Now compare that to this year, which is shown in the red line. As you can see, 1911 was much hotter, actually about 10 degrees hotter but the press won't be talking about that. Every single day during that three weeks in May was hotter in 1911 than this year, and supposedly this year is the hottest year ever. This map shows temperatures in the Northeast on May 22, 1911, with a purple dot showing temperatures of above 100 degrees. It's pretty incredible to think that Maine was above 100 degrees in May of 1911. If we had temperatures like that now, climate scientists would say with great certainty that temperatures like that were impossible without high CO2 levels. But CO2 levels were very low in 1911. Climate scientists who keep trying to show cause and effect relationships between CO2 and heat wave have no evidence to support their theories. Here's a New York Times article discussing the May heat wave. Chicago, May 27. The cool wave promised by the Weather Bureau failed to develop today, and the thermometer almost equaled its record of yesterday, registering 93 degrees at 3 o'clock. Seven deaths were recorded, making a total of 15 who've died from the heat of the last three days. There was actually a lot of interesting stuff in that day's New York Times. There were some interesting photographs of women baseball players. But we're not done with 1911 yet. There was also a record heat wave at the end of January and the beginning of February that year. On February 1st, 1911, it was 93 degrees in Oklahoma and Texas, 86 degrees in Kansas, 84 degrees in Missouri, 75 degrees in Illinois, and 71 degrees in Indiana. February 2nd, 1911, flowers blooming in Texas. An unprecedented heat wave may cause loss of fruit crop at Fort Worth 93 degrees. Obviously there was something going on in the year 1911 which was causing heat waves all year long across the United States and Europe. And we can say with absolute certainty that it was not carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide levels were very low in 1911. The great physicist Richard Feynman said, it doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is, it doesn't matter how smart you are, if it doesn't agree with the experiment it's wrong. Climate scientists who attribute heat waves to carbon dioxide are wrong. And if they were actual scientists, they would want to understand what the real cause of heat waves is. But instead, they just try to hide years like 1911 by altering the temperature data. But I don't think they can bring back the 40,000 dead people in Paris from the 1911 heat wave by altering data. Now let's look at another year from that period, 1913. From July 8th through July 14th, 1913, temperatures at Greenland Ranch, California were 128, 129, 134, 129, 130, 131, and 127. The 134 degrees on July 10th, 1913 was the hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth. And the United States has not recorded a temperature above 130 degrees for decades, but they had three of them that week. That was part of another tremendous heat wave across the United States. On July 1st, 1913, there were 100 degree temperatures shown by the pink dots from California up into Maine. July 3rd, 1913, 81 dead heat wave toll. Chicago's hospitals filled with persons stricken in streets. Temperature is 102 degrees. The summer of 1913 was record hot, but that wasn't the only extreme weather in the United States that year. The winter of 1913 brought floods to the Ohio River Valley, which were the worst on record. Hundreds of thousands of people were left homeless. This is a postcard from 1913. 
Dayton, Ohio during greatest flood in world's history, 1913. You can see that the street lights are almost underwater. Here are some more pictures from that flood. Look at this horse in Hamilton, Ohio. And Houston, Texas also had tremendous flooding in 1913. Here's another heat wave in Europe in 1923. August 11th, 1923, French record broken. Exceptional heat is being experienced in the southern counties of England and many parts of the continent. The shade temperature yesterday reached 124 degrees at Seville in Spain, 111 degrees at Toulouse, France, which is a record. The sun temperature in many Spanish towns reached over 140 degrees. Obviously, this record heat was not caused by carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide levels were very low at the time. Now let's look at one more very hot year from that time period, 1896. July 18th, 1896, intense heat. The heat in England is unusually great. Numerous cases of death from sunstroke are reported, including a sentry at Marlborough House, the town residence of His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. In Spain, the heat is intense and numbers of birds have been killed by it. The current Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, announced last week that we only have 18 months left to solve global warming, but I haven't heard about any of his centuries dying in the heat this year. India also had record heat in 1896. They had temperatures in the shade ranging from 114 degrees to 123 degrees, the same temperatures that were claimed this year to be a record. And here's another article about the July heat wave in Europe. Numerous cases of sunstroke, birds drop dead in Spain. Phenomenal heat has been experienced this summer both in England and on the continent. In England, numerous cases of sunstroke have occurred. January of that year, 1896, was the hottest month on record in Southeast Australia. The New York Times reported that it was 127 degrees in the shade in Adelaide, and temperatures that month were incredibly hot almost every single day. Temperatures in the hottest parts of New South Wales approached 130 degrees and were over 120 degrees on many days during January 1896. So we already know that temperatures were extremely hot in 1896 in Europe, India, and Australia, and it was also incredibly hot in the United States. Nearly 1,500 people died in the heat in New York City during that summer. And prior to 1896, Europe had many terrible heat waves and droughts. The history of the world droughts goes back to the year 627, when in France and Germany thousands of human beings died of thirst. In the year 1000, the rivers of Europe dried up and heaps of fish were left to putrefy and spread the plague that followed. In 1123, the Rhine River dried up in Alsace. During the Battle of Bella in 1260, more men died from heat than wounds. In 1303 and 1304, the Rhine, the Loire, and Seine rivers ran dry. In 1779, many persons in Bologna were stifled. Shops all over Europe were closed for months. And in 1821, a plague of mice came with intolerable heat. More than 200,000 persons died from heat in France. It's obvious that heat, drought, and extreme weather has nothing to do with carbon dioxide levels. All of these heat waves and droughts occurred with carbon dioxide levels very low. So we can state with 100% certainty that lowering carbon dioxide levels will not prevent these events from happening in the future. People who believe that lowering CO2 levels will prevent these sort of events in the future are engaging in superstition, not science. Climate alarmists imagine that a low CO2 world looks like this. But science is based on evidence, not superstition. And the evidence shows us that a low CO2 climate looks more like this. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.